Hi, my name is Jason Gilmore, and in this screencast, I'll show you just how easy it is to convert your SOAP service to REST with no coding required using the Dream Factory platform. I'm currently logged into Dream Factory's web based administration interface. This web interface is included with all editions of Dream Factory, including the open source edition, the silver edition, and the Gold Edition. Now because this is our demonstration server, you'll see that a wide variety of supported services have already been configured, including MongoDB, Logstash, Oracle, Amazon S3, Microsoft SQL Server, and MySQL. Now these are just a handful of the almost 60 services that the Dream Factory platform supports. I'm going to demonstrate creating a REST API for an existing SOAP service. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll use the publicly available temperature conversion SOAP service made available through the W3Schools website. This SOAP service demonstrates how SOAP can be used to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa. So what I'll do is copy the WSDL URL and return to the Dream Factory interface. Next I'll create a new service by clicking the Create button. Now this interface is practically identical for every service, meaning once you become familiar with it, creating new REST APIs will be a familiar and streamlined process. To create a new API, I'll first select the desired service from the Service Type dropdown. SOAP is found under the Remote Service option. So I'll go ahead and click on SOAP Service. And next, I'll provide a name, a label, and a description. The name is particularly important because as you'll soon see, it will form part of the REST URL structure for this service. So I'll give it the creative name of SOAP and label the label and description accordingly. We'll set it to active, the service, because we want to start using the API immediately after its creation. And finally, I'll click on the Config tab. And this is where the connection-specific configuration details are defined. This example involves interacting with a public SOAP service. So all I have to do is paste the WSDL URI here. However, if your needs are more sophisticated, you can add connection options here and additionally headers here in the headers section. And you'll see that Dream Factory supports both generic and WSSE headers. Finally, you have the option of caching any results returned when interacting with this SOAP service. To do so, all you have to do is click the Data Retrieval Caching Enabled checkbox and then specify a cache duration time defined in minutes here. Once done, press the Save button to generate the REST API. After pressing Save, return to the Services Management tab and at the bottom of the table you'll find the newly created SOAP service. If you click on any of the services found here, you can edit the details associated with that service during the creation process. So you can change the name, the label, the description, you could disable the API if you need to, and you can also click the Config tab to change any of the information provided there. Now we don't actually need to change anything, so I'll next navigate to the API Docs tab to test out the newly created REST API endpoints. Here you'll find the documentation is presented in alphabetical order according to service. So I'll scroll down to the new SOAP service and click on it to the view the documentation. Because this is Swagger documentation, it includes a useful interactive option which allows you to interact with the API without writing any code first. 
To do so, all you have to do is click on the desired endpoint, such as the Celsius to Fahrenheit endpoint, and press the Try It Out button. Now because this is a post request, we're going to need to modify the request body. And in this example, I'll convert 55 degrees Celsius to its Fahrenheit representation. So I'll enter 55 as the argument, and then I'll scroll down and press the Execute button to perform the request. And I'll scroll down to view the results. You can see that the documentation provides the HTTP status code, the response body, and the response headers. And furthermore, because we can see the response body, we know that 55 degrees Celsius is represented as 131 degrees in Fahrenheit. But more important than that, you also know what URL you need to interact with this endpoint, because the API documentation includes it for your reference in the request URL section. Now that we know the REST API has been generated and is accessible, let's create a new API key so we can interact with this API from outside of the web-based administration interface. To do so, we'll first create a role which will restrict the API key to specifically the SOAP service. You can create a role by clicking on the Roles tab located at the top of the interface, and then click the Create link located on the left. You'll assign a name and a description, SOAP role demo and you'll also set this role to active if you intend on using it immediately. Next you'll click the Access tab and it's here where you're going to bind a role to a specific service. To do so you'll click the plus button located on the right and then we'll select the SOAP service. We're going to give this API key access to everything, which is the default for a SOAP service. However, you have the option of defining which methods this API key or this role can use in conjunction with the service, which is a great feature. We're going to set it to all for the purposes of this demo, and we'll leave API access enabled, press save to save the new role which you'll find here at the bottom. Next we're going to create an API key by clicking on the Apps tab and this is where the different API keys for your APIs are managed. To create a new API key click on the Create tab as I just did and provide a name and description so I'll call this SOAP Demo SOAP demo. I'll set it to active because we're going to use it right away. And then I'll click on the no storage required radio button because we're going to use this API key outside of the application and outside of our, our service. Finally, I'll select the SOAP role and press save to generate the API key, which you'll find here at the bottom of the table. So next, we're going to use this API key to interact with the API. To demonstrate how the REST API can be accessed from a third-party client, such as an iPhone or web application, I'll copy the newly generated API key and head over to my test HTTP client. Now this client is called Insomnia, and it's a great client for the Mac However, there are plenty of other such HTTP clients available, including perhaps most notably Postman. So just do a quick search and you'll be able to find one of these that is supported on your particular operating system. Now I've already gone ahead and pre-populated Insomnia to point to the identical API endpoint that we interacted with in the Swagger documentation. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to paste in the API key as a header. All auto-generated 
REST APIs exposed through your Dream Factory platform are going to require an API key. And as you just learned, we did that within the administration interface. And the platform is going to expect that API key to be sent along uh, under the name x-dreamfactory-api-key. So I've pasted in the key, I've set it to the appropriate name, leaving just the step of creating our request body, which I'll do under the JSON tab. And this will be identical to what you saw in the Swagger documentation. We'll pass along 55 degrees Celsius. And with that done, I will press the send button to send the request. And again, as you can see, we've successfully interacted with the API to convert 55 degrees Celsius to its Fahrenheit equivalent. So there you have it. Using the Dream Factory platform, you can expose SOAP services as REST APIs in an incredibly short amount of time with no time consuming code refactoring or tedious configuration required. Now, if you'd like to see firsthand how Dream Factory can dramatically reduce your API development expenses, contact us at info at dreamfactory.com to schedule a meeting with our engineering team. Thank you.